Hill Billy here with Rockstars Blue Radio, and I'm talking to the band Killbox. How y'all doing? Good. 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 Excellent. What's up? All right, sweet. Uh, so now, where are y'all based out of? What city? Covington. COV. Covington, absolutely. Cool. So now, how long uh, have y'all been a band? Um, what, about a year now? Not quite. I think we formed in Oct late October. Is that right? Something like that? Late October, I think. Of 2011, so right. about eight, nine. I don't know. I'm gonna do the math, but it's <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, something like that. So uh, now, how did y'all uh, meet and come up with the band? Did y'all play in the band before, or how did y'all come about? It was um, supposed to be side project. Actually, uh, this started on a camping trip with Roy. There, um, made a comment, wanted to do some heavy stuff. Everybody was in a band except for me. Um, supposed to just be a little deal on the side and kind of turned into its own monster. What it is. That's about it. Now, can you all uh, tell me uh, like how your uh, songwriting process is? Uh, is it a group effort or is it like an individual? You take one guitar riff, work in there, or how does it all work on your all songs? Well, to Brad comes up with a, a lot of the 80% of, uh, of the riffs, and but we we develop it as a band when we bring some riffer three, you know, to uh, to the table, and then we work on it because he's really good at he's got vocals already in mind, you know what I mean. So the, the guitar riffs go with it, and then I change it a little bit here, a little bit there, kind of make it. Scott puts in his two cents, or we put everybody. It's, pretty it's much collaborative, it's but pretty I mean, much of a collaborative like event. I mean, we get up here, we, I throw out some ideas, and everybody puts, you know, basically does it their own way. So I mean, it works out well for us. Right, the way we do so. Yeah, Brad's got a lot of ideas. <laughs> so that's a very well, good you know, thing. We don't so stand up here and look at each other. You yeah, know? It's, somebody's yeah. always got There's something. There's always something. So out. it's an interesting process. Right. So everything comes up with. Right. Now, uh, well, like as being a uh, singer, do you come up with all the lyrics as uh, yourself? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, pretty much, I we do the music, and uh, once the music's done, you know, I'll, I'll kind of just free flow with it. And, once that's in place, I'll take it back and then I'll maybe stru structure the lyrics to like what we already got. So I mean, I mean that's my process of doing it. I mean, a lot of people do it different. So yeah, that's pretty much how it is though. I mean, music comes first, lyrics come later. But yeah, I, I pretty much write all all the lyrics though. Now, like for like the change in all of them, uh, how did that all of them songs come about? Was it from like a dream or just you had lyrics before, or where did they all come? From? Learning experience in the past. Well, uh, I think. Ever since the band was formed, it's, we've been kind of like on a mission. I mean, as of like trying to put heavy music back on the map. You know, it's kind of scared of it dying off there for a while. You know, and uh, so my whole point of view around this whole band is to you know bring all this back and you know and try to basically develop from where it's at and like where the hip hop is and all that stuff is right now. We're trying to just make sure this can have a chance to go mainstream. So the changing has a lot to do with that, about changing the whole pattern of music right now. So, I mean, if you listen to like all the lyrics in the songs um, and the titles of the songs, they all have this, you know, around the same meaning. You know, they're all about bringing us back and having a really big impact on music. And I think that we all have the same drive to do that. It's like I said, it's like a mission for us you know, to make sure we're out there and we get hurt because you know, that's what the lyrics are about. And I think if, when people read the lyrics, I think it's going to make a whole different impact on them as a whole. I mean, is the, what the music's about. You know? So we, we really come in with a message, and that's the thing. You know, we, we want to drop that in our live show too. You know, make sure everybody knows why they're there. You know, we appreciate the fans. We appreciate everybody who comes to see us. So yeah, it's it's all about the message. Uh, now, I'd like, uh, take time out real fast to introduce yourself, selves to each other, <laughs> and then, uh, like as far as you know, what you do as a band. Billy Cole, guitar, guitars. Scott Amiot, bass. Brad Borchers, vocals. Roy Smith, drums. Cool. So now, like, uh, what's y'all's like influences as a musician and as a band overall? Mine personally is all over the place. Honestly, um, I'd say first and foremost is probably Pantera. Um, even go with Megadeth. Then I like a lot of the jazz influenced metal, like Cynic and stuff like that. Kind of Meshuggah. I like them a lot. Not the like setting, but I could go on and on honestly, but I mean it goes, it's from one extreme to the other with me, I like it all. I'm 
the same way, man. It's all over the place, but I am all about the breakdowns. Yeah. Die cast, Pantera, of course. Anything that's just got the nasty breakdowns. Bury your dead. Love it all. Yeah, bury your dead. Yeah, I love, this, love the super groove. Uh, you know, Phil and Simon has always been my, one of my biggest influences. And I can get back to, like, Kyle Thomas and all of this project that he's done. I love that guy to death. You know, and they had similar vocal patterns and vocal styles. So, you know, I'm, I'm just along that same format for me. You know? So it's, it's all about the power to me. I mean, power vocals always stand out. Sure. Definitely the killer. The breakdowns. All the, you know, like Slipknot, um, I like Hate Breed, uh, Lamb of God. I mean, they bring it every time I've ever seen them. It's a big influence for me would be Lamb of God. Um, and I think as far as all of us go, I mean, we all pretty much listen to pretty much the same thing. And that's really something yeah. that's, that makes us who we are. It's because we all kind of come from the same background. We all listen to the same kind of music. Yeah, we all are on the same mission, and it just come together so good that, I mean, you can't deny it. I, 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 yeah, we, uh, that was, that was a really, um, it made it easy. It was yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a breath, coming in with like-minded musicians, you know, I mean, it's, it's really, like he said, a breath of fresh That's air. That's pretty much what turned it from a side project into what it is. I mean, like I said, these guys were all in bands. I just left P8 and, uh. Just kind of wanted to keep playing, and you know, I wasn't playing on anything like this. It was, you know, you guys got some time. Let's get together. Let's rock out a little bit, one night a week or something. And it, it meshed so well and clicked so well. I mean, yeah, everybody was, yeah, everybody was immediately like, you know and let's, immediately let's just do this, man. smiling when the song, like, yeah. oh my god, yeah, you know, when you got that smile and you get the cold chill bumps, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's it's for real. Yeah, it was from the first practice, the yeah, first song, much. like when we wrote the first song. It probably wasn't our best material, but we knew that there it's was our latest. It was like we knew there was something there. You know what I mean, that we could work with you know, with everybody's collaboration. And so, I mean, it was instant, basically. Right. Very instant. At the end of every song, you know, after you get done writing, that's my favorite. <laughs> man, that's my favorite one. You know, that's yeah, not the, one of us. Not the two true and horn, but it's <laughs> right. like you know, that's the way we felt. Like that's my right, favorite. So. You know, out of our stuff, you know, we always. I mean, I, I try to pick my favorite, and I, I really can't. Right. You know, I like them all. I just quit saying that's my favorite. You know? <laughs> Whatever song's playing at the time. Right. Exactly. That's my favorite. <laughs> well, that's why I was going to ask you in the next question. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you: Is there any song that y'all have done and written so far that has maybe a special meaning to you? Just one song, you know, that you've written for something or whatever that you feel closer to? Uh, well, I, truly, I mean, every song has a, a meaning to me, as of like, I mean, of what this band's about. So, I mean. If you like, I said, if you listen to the lyrics of any of these songs, you're going to get something out of it. You know, it's definitely there's something behind it. There's a meaning to it, and I think it really propels us to another level on some in some ways. You know, what I mean, as of like what it means. You know. Kind of get a feel just looking at the set list. You got Unstoppable coming back. The way it's going to be until I say it's over. It's just, I mean, it's it's, it's about attitude. It is. You know, yeah. I mean, and we come out with attitude because it's, you know, I think that's what it takes to keep this the scene alive. It's like people are just losing track of like you know what music you know what heavy music's about. You know? and I think that we're trying to make that substance there. You know, when we play in our live show, it's definitely going to be visual. You're going to see it, and then you know we want it to be you know when you read the CD, when you look at the CD, it's also you're going to have a meaning behind it too. So you know that's that's pretty much what we achieved. Um, right. So um, well, what? What do you uh, you see as your biggest challenges to overcome as an artist? The Diversity. area, <laughs> diversity. I think uh, with the way I mean, just the way uh, you don't we don't get no promotion. You know, we're not going to be on the radio. I mean, I know that. There's not but, a lot of venues in the area. But you know, there's only been a few select bands that's ever succeeded. You know, as of not having any you know turnover or like push on any on any level. So that's going to be our biggest feat is just to make it successful on our own you know, and get it out there is just you know, our word of mouth you know and our our motto of this band is we're going to spread the word right because that's what it takes it takes everybody to come to the shows and hear it and if you like it you know tell your friends tell the people you know you know to come out to a show because it's all about spreading the word because right. you know that's that's the way pantera did it you know mm -hmm. they didn't get no radio play they didn't get no it's, it's all about the people what you like, make sure you let everybody know that you like it. Come out and check it out. This is a badass band. All right. So, yeah, spread the word. All right. 
So uh, with that being said, uh, what makes it worth it? You know, like uh, what makes all the hard work work pay off at the end of the week or whatever? This is my, this is my outlet. <laughs> yes. Like after, after, you know, after the hard weeks of work, I come here and, you know, we, we come up here and throw down. Come up here and sweat your ass off, jump around like a fool, right. play and shit you love. And it, it makes it work. It makes it worth it, you know, if you can, if you can come up here and put in all this hard work and put out a good quality product and at the end of the day, you know, play in front of a packed house. And I think that's what we're, that's our goal, you know, just keep playing in front of packed houses, you know. And if we, if we can succeed in doing that, I think that we we'll look at each other and be like, we were successful as a band. Right. So, yeah, you life. see how excited the fans get, mm -hmm. you know, the guys that, you know, I mean, just two weeks ago or whatever it was, you know, I had somebody drive by and pass in my truck, and I know he's experienced it too, where they just, you know, they see your give me the double on the back horn, the they see my sticker, it says kill box, and say, you guys are fucking awesome. I guess you know, they don't like me because I ain't experienced it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really awesome that they, they feel that strongly about it, that they would right. drive by and actually, you know, right. take and the I guess time out shall see that. next Saturday, you know. Yeah. For, me, I, for me, what makes it worth it is like, Kind of what Brad said. It's and I know Roy and Scott spoke the same way. It is 100% an outlet. Oh, yeah. And like oh, like every time you write a new song, you know you're that 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 feeling is not of not only accomplishment but fun. Yeah. You know just everything. It's 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 in a in you know society and it is not that awesome. You know what I mean? When we're up here, it, it, <laughs> it's it fades gone. away. You know I mean? it, it's just gone. And you know that's you know that's. That's priceless. You can't put a price mm -hmm. on that. That's what that's music, though. Yeah. I mean, even growing up, like music was always an outlet for me. Like <coughs> to do it, you know, just the that was our way to express ourselves. We don't get any other way to do that. You know, what I'm saying and sometimes we need to do it on a greater level. Right yeah. now, we're doing it on a greater stage. So, you know, we've been around it for a while. We're all veterans. Of what's going on? We've been decent sized bands. You know, what I mean, that's really come up from Covington, COV. So, you know, to have them fans back again was really. I mean, blowing my mind. It was a, it was a, it was a big, a big eye opener to see people coming back to back to the shows that I ain't seen in years. You know? So I'm, I'm hoping that the 30th, you know, we play. I'm gonna look out and see people I ain't seen in years. You know, Old friends. Yeah, you know, and I, I'm expecting that. So. I'm gonna be cool. Sweet. So uh, I know. Uh, well, like you mentioned, the 30th, uh, like that. So I guess y'all pumped. That's your debut show. Where is that gonna be taking place of? And other shows, you all, you all got any more shows lined up for the summer? Or yeah, the June thirtieth shows at the Thompson House, which is in Newport, Kentucky. Um, it's on our website, www.killboxmusic.com. Uh, we got a show the very next weekend, which is kind of odd, with the same venue, but it's a killer all all weekend festival, beer fest. Thirty uh, bands, fifteen bands a night, two nights. Big thanks to everybody for getting us on that bill. That's uh, going to be a cool, cool weekend. After that, we've got several things in the works, but nothing 100%. Actually, we've got August 3rd. August 3rd is going to be a yeah, I don't August, know who's all on it. August 3rd at the Madison Theater in Covington, that's going to be a really big deal for us. It's basically our getting in the door there. So, uh, you know, we're all from that area, and it'd be nice to play a hometown show. Homecoming. Yeah, okay. definitely. And that's an awesome venue, so it'd be really cool. We're getting pretty many offers. I know Billy's got a couple offers, offers from uh, Lansing, Michigan. Uh, Indianapolis, a couple other places, nothing confirmed yet, but it's it's kind of weird. I mean, like you said, the 30th, we haven't played a show yet, and the offers are just flowing, right? which is kind of blowing me it's away. I never, mean, no, yeah. Never would have thought so, that. We appreciate it. Yes, yeah, yeah, we do. We yeah, shall, see. We shall <laughs> see. I can tell you from being, in, you know, trying to get shows in former bands how hard it was to have, this is like, this is a, this is pretty neat you know as far as uh, I don't even know how to put it any better than that like we, we can almost uh, let's hope it you know let's hope it keeps rolling like that because right now it's real good yep. so uh, is there any other musicians or band that don't matter where or when uh, is that you all would like to work with like, either on stage later on or even in the studio is there any other bands or musicians uh, once again I'm probably the wrong person I my list is incredibly long um, I'm looking forward, honestly, to give a shout out to our friend Sakari here here locally. Those dudes tear it up. I mean, they're all <laughs> fabulous musicians, all um, cool dudes, too. I mean, they're great, great people to hang out with, yep. and they bring it every show, man. Their show sounds like their CD every show. Uh, that's just one band off the top of my head here locally, and we're playing with them the 30th and the 7th. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be realized pretty soon, but if I, you know, honestly, 
nationally, anybody, man. You know, I like them all. I mean, it could, it, For me, it's anybody national, anybody local. I just love playing. And it's, it's the show that I'm, brings it. I'm looking forward to booking some shows with P8, man. I yeah. mean, those are all my buddies. Yeah. Some of the guys from the COV, man, um, don't get to hang out with them like I used to. But I'm really looking forward to booking some local stuff with those guys. Man. They freaking bring it every show. Absolutely. Tight as a Nats ass every show. I mean, probably, one, probably one of the best around here in Buckhorn. And they work their asses off putting shows together. Yeah, that'll be a great show. Yeah. So hopefully, not if to what's going to happen. Guys. But yeah. I'd like to do uh, something with Widow Sundays. Or, oh yeah, you know, Widow. We, I mean, we got on, and that's another thing I want to talk about is like, you know, we got on this Rat Pack thing and it happened really fast. The Rat Pack records, and uh, it was, it was. I mean, we weren't even done with the with the demo yet. And they was already like, you know, wanting to put it out there. So, you know, we, we kind of looked around on our site and there was a band on there called Widow Sunday. And we all kind of like, we did, you know, it's my brother. It's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. 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 So. Really good stuff, though. I mean, and like I, I said, any, any band that, that really would, you know, want to play with us, I'm all about it. So. They're out of Boston, Mass., I think, is where they're, is that where they're from. Yeah, but North they've been around a while, too, Widow Sunday. They're on our label, and they're, like he said, phenomenal. they're, they're, they're beasts. They're simple. They're beasts. You know, they're, they're good. They're pros. They've been doing it a long time, and their new shit's awesome. You know, so I agree with that 100%. So uh, I like to ask this uh, question uh, with some bands here. Um, well, like, what do you think about stuff like the social media, like Facebook and all that? What's the pros and cons? You know, I know like for MySpace it was a little bit harder, like, uh, to get out there, your name out there. <coughs> but now, you know, I ask this question because there's like always pros and cons. Sometimes people, other bands think it's more challenging, other bands and all that. So what do y'all think? Me personally, I think um, there are pros and cons. The pros being you can reach a giant audience. You know, what I mean, now you can send your stuff all over the world. You know, and, and it's it's really on how hard you promote. But there in lies the the con. Yeah. People don't work as hard anymore. They're not out flying. They're not out posting flyers and you know, and, and just going to shows and handing out, putting your little things on the, all the stuff that you did before the social media. People have kind of Makes Stop you lazy. going. Makes you lazy. Yeah, it makes you lazy, and you just you think you just throw out an event, and you're going to have a hundred people, and then you wonder why there's eight people there. You know right. what I mean? It's, I mean, I, I remember back in the day, you know, my first band where you know I would be working hard. I'd be like glue and you know making these flyers, and you know we'd get a telephone pole, a telephone pole, a telephone pole, just. I mean, with a staple gun. And go to every yeah. show at Bogarts and with every 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 that one question because I keep on getting like the pros and cons on that because like you said a lot of people fans that's been around for a long time they uh, enjoyed it a lot more back then because you know you get to interact with your fans or friends you know stuff like that you know actually get you know out there on the street like you said and all that so I thought I asked that real fast um, but it uh, where do y'all see yourself in the next year you know like are y'all going to hit the studio after you do more or are y'all still working on music or what's happening to y'all right now? I think we're still working on music right now. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty close to probably going back in the studio and going full length. I mean, we're all excited about that. We got some new material that we really want to record. Yeah, um, new materials. Like we said earlier, it's, it's nasty. Yeah, like I said, the, the EP came really quick for us. And like the four songs were like the first four songs we ever wrote. And this that, time, that was supposed to be given away. And right. Like I said, this was a side project. So, I mean, record, give them out. Here you go, man. Have a CD. And, and, and like I mean, on these on these new songs, you know, we're about to record, they're uh, more thought out. And, you know, we, we kind of know where we're at. You know, we're comfortable with each other, right, and stuff like that. So I think this next CD that comes out is just really going to be like threefold. It's just going to be so much more powerful than we already did. So I mean, the sky's the limit for that. You know, and uh, I say, you know, within a year, before a year, we'll be in the studio or something like that. But see, I say six next six months, concentrating on shows. Not a ton of them. We don't want to oversaturate the area. We're gonna do some out of town shows, like we said earlier, and we're gonna to continue to write. You know, we've got we, we want to we don't want to 
cheat anybody and release a seven song full length album. You know what I mean? We want it to be, you know, a, a full length, full length. Yeah. You know, if you're going to pay for it, you're going to get your money's worth. You know? Yeah. So make sure to. But we're really looking forward to that getting back in the studio. That's that's almost as fun as everything else. Yeah, that's you know? my peas and carrots. When it, yeah, when it's <laughs> it's not even. It, I don't even dislike it when you're struggling or not struggling, but you know the work right. part of putting track in and the monotonous of, of it. You know, I I enjoy all that. You know, I, you know, I know you're a studio guy, so you know it's fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, now, like uh, rap back records uh i think y'all mentioned to me uh, the other night that y'all was on some kind of compilation uh what's that about and how did y'all come about you know? uh it was kind of news to me really uh really george lynch is on yeah this? there's some big names on there man george Dave. lynch michael wilt from queen's rave some big names on uh, this compilation i was really surprised yeah. to be on it joe you know, hit us up. It's like, you know, guys are and it's it. part of uh, the Eric Buell racing team. I don't, yeah. I don't know. He's got a band too. I don't know what's the band called. Eric. Um, Eric Buell is it the Curb Race? I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, that's terrible. So uh, if you're in anybody's into motorcycle racing, um, sport bikes, you know the the Eric Buell is an American American race, race bike, and uh, they're pretty bad and nasty. You know, so just to be invited to, to be to be on that's a pretty pretty cool thing for, for I think for all of I us. Mean, we that's, were, that's we, were on, we came out. Yeah, it wasn't like. He said, hey, by, it was kind of like literally, by the way, you guys are on this compilation. It's like, hell yeah, man. And you know? and like he said, there's so Lynch Mob on is there, on it, George yeah. Lynch of the Lynch Mob. I think, I think Widow Sunday's got Widow Sunday's on it. Q. 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 Michael Wilton of Queen's Rack. I'm repeating you. There's a, there's a bunch of bands on the yeah. back. I think there's 14 there. tracks. 14 tracks on it. Yeah, so it was, it was good to be in that compilation. I wish I had the, the web address to plug right now. I don't. I guess right. you can go to www.ratpeckrecords.com. It'd be Rat Pack America. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Right. Cool. So, uh, what all sites can like uh, people find you on? You know, like Facebook. Is there any other sites? We're on all of them, man. I think. <laughs> if we're not on it. I don't know about it yet. We, Twitter. <laughs> we do have a Twitter. We have a Twitter. We got eight followers. Yeah, I'm not. That, we got Reverb Nation. Reverb Nation, obviously. Uh, we got music. We got our own, which is not social media. Our own website, which we really put a lot of time and effort into that because it's got everything. It's got a link to all of our. Um, Social media is right in it. That's the killboxmusic.com. It's got a link to Facebook, link to Reverb Nation, link to our YouTube page, link to our Twitter account, link to our MySpace account. Link to the Rat Pack Records account. Link to, I mean, it's got, you know, it's, it's a, pretty much. Array, there's an array of places you can find Killbox. I right. mean, if you hit one site, you hit them all because we got links to everything right. everywhere. So, right. pretty much. Now, I did see, uh, notice uh, the other day, you all was on Snowflake, right? That's awesome because well, Lavin's on there and everybody. You know, yeah. There's a lot of people that's on Spotify. Oh, I thought you were, okay, I thought you were making fun of me because no, I, I, no, <laughs> he was no, listening to Phil awesome. Collins on Spotify. <laughs> I think, I think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, big, Phil's Spotify. the man. Phil is the man. I'm a big Spotify. And I always listen to that and all that because I thought it was pretty cool. You know, when they made it up. And I saw, noticed that y'all, you know, was on that. So how do you feel about that? So, um, I'm pretty new to it, honest with you, Hell Billy. Um, when I clicked on it, that's when I found out we were on it. So I guess right. our label did that for us, pretty right. much. That's not something I did, but you know, even little things like you know, being in iTunes Japan, you know, in right. iTunes Germany, we're Actually, all he, Joe O'Brien. We physical are, distribution in Japan recently. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. so I mean, he's put our, our labels done a lot as far as globally and nationally or everything. So things that you know I would never think to do or if. You know, and he's already done it. You know, so this ain't his first rodeo, though. So he's pretty good at it. So now, uh, you know that uh, Rockstar's Loose supports a lot of unsigned bands, a lot of bands that's you know like independent label bands and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, do you got y'all got any advice for them younger bands that's been out there for a while now that still ain't there yet, or even the younger musicians that just now get started? My advice is hone your craft, pretty much. You know, don't don't put out. I mean, stay in the basement or stay in the garage for an extra six months. You know, get a quality recording. You know, don't don't get your friend Jake to, to record you. You know, which is fine. To, it, to be honest with you, after I say that, you know, people can do fantastic recordings now. But it all comes back to like, if you're gonna do it, do it. Be, right. You know, stick with make it. sure it's make sure it's solid. You know, if someone's if it's if you're going to put it out for people to hear, you want to be proud of it, you know. And I I hear so much stuff, you know, not not, not on not on rockstarsblue.com. You guys always have killer songs, 
but you know, like checking out, like, hey, check out my band, and I check out their band, and can't even understand what's going on. It's like they put a radio down in the garage, and recorded it, and put that out for the world. You know, that might just that might be youth, or that might be just. I don't know. I personally wouldn't do it. I would, you know, I would, I would concentrate on honing your craft, get good at your instrument, you know, and um, put out a good recording. For, for it's band. definitely yeah. about quality. I mean, and I, I mean, for all the young people coming out there, I think that you know, if, if you're gonna do it, do it for real. I mean, I mean, there's like I said, music's what you make it. You know, what I mean, it's like it's all about you, what you want to do. It's your point of view on everything. So if you're gonna do it, do it for real and do it good. You know, I mean, if make you put it half good. into it. You're going to get half out of it. You've know? yep. got to go 100% and get the balls out. Right. So, uh, like, uh, what's the prefer? Uh, I know y'all haven't played out yet, but, uh, like, I know y'all have been in other bands and y'all played out. What's the prefer in the studio or do y'all like playing out uh, better? This is a hard question. This is yeah, a hard not question. Not for me, man. Dude. Live, probably. Live. I gotta get live. live. Falls out live. You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a live. I think I'm a live performer, but you know, I love the studio though. I, yeah. I, I like, I like the studio because you know, you can go in and get every idea you ever, you know, had wandering around your mind. You can put it down. Right. You, can, you can get that across anywhere, and that's what I love about the studios. You know, there's, there's no limits to this. Yeah. You play live. You just live, and it's just. You get the feel of the crowd, and that's there's nothing like that. You know, I mean, it's it's you gotta there's pros. I mean, it's all pros. There's no kind of, right. there's no kinds of none of it. To me, right. you know, right. so, you know. I like the fact that the studio. I mean, especially once it's all tracked. I love like when you get that first mix back. You know, like oh, so you can tell it's gonna be good, but right. there's these you gotta tweak it here, tweak it there. You know, and then even when we get that fourth or fifth mix back and you're pissed at this point, you know, <laughs> you know it's still the process is you know, because, I mean, ultimately, those tracks are there forever. You know, I mean, once you've recorded them and put them out there, you know, that's they're your, there. That's your stamp. Yeah, that's your stamp. You know, once you stamp of approval, there ain't no change in it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's there forever. Make sure it's good. Now, I know y'all haven't been uh, together for very long and all that, but... Since then, y'all, y'all first start getting together. What has changed, or how do y'all feel? Y'all, it's like uh, y'all evolved, uh, evolved uh, since then. The the tunes, for starters, each one has gotten progressively better. I can't wait to hear what our seventeenth song is gonna sound like. Yeah, you know I mean that's um, we've all, me, Roy, Scott, Brad, all of us have improved. You know, at at what we do, and not just the songwriting, just our individual instrument. And uh, just because we all demand like perfection from each other, we if you mess this up, my God, this guy will look straight at you. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you, know, you get the you, death you, look at yours. Yeah. Like you want to see a pissed off drummer, man, miss one symbol. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're yeah, they we're can't definitely get pissed at me. we're chilling. Out. We're chilling. No, it's good though. Now. It pushes us. But, yeah. We hold each other accountable. Right. But you know, I, I think there's always room to be there. I think I mean even in a band, I mean I don't care. I don't, Bay Mom scene or whatever, but I mean, there's always room to improve. And I think everybody can learn. And I, and I think you know. <laughs> exactly. But I think that, you know, that's what we do. I mean, every song we do, you know, we can always look at each other and be like, you know, let's try this, let's try that. You know, there's never any, you know, set in stone what it is. You know, I mean, we're, we're always looking to get better. Yeah, and that goes back to our writing. There is no attitudes. That's, I forgot to mention that. That's that, the best part about the band. You know, no nobody is. No, we ain't doing that. It's always let's try this. Let's try this. Okay, let's nah, that, that didn't work. Let's try this. You Everybody's know, open-minded. It's all, you know, it's an open-minded process. Yeah, I don't think we've never. I don't think we've ever had an argument like as no. like up here jamming. I can't think of one. I don't think we've ever had an argument. I think that's a really awesome quality. I, I think it's the first band I've ever been in and we've never had that. So yeah, usually you have that one musician. You know, who's very, <laughs> very focused and thinks you know that their way is perfect. Which, you know, that's great. You know, if it's if it's the Billy Cole band and they're just my players, you know, we'll do it the Billy Cole way. But it's a band, you know, it's Killbox, so we I mean we do it we all we bounce ideas off each other every every even the songs that are written occasionally we're like, yeah, hey, we'll make just tweak that. You know, that, yeah. that that would sound better there and stuff like that. It's it's sometimes you just gotta play a song a while for you know, for you get developed type one, you know. And I think, you know, that's that's the way we look at it, you know. No song completely done until we stamp it, you know. So, yeah. all right. So, uh, like uh, now, I think I told y'all before. You know, like I had a few listeners say, like they just said you 
uh, y'all's music is almost like uh, the new wave Pantera, you know, like all American metal, like Lamb of God type stuff, you know, like the, the all, like just uh, pure metal, you know, like Pantera style. But how do y'all feel about that, you know, like being compared to someone like that? Some people don't want to be compared to it because they want to be like, you know, this is my music, this is whatever, but how, I mean, sometimes bands, like when you compare them to somebody, how does that feel? You know, uh, that's, that's a good one. We'll take it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've got our own flavor, but if somebody wants to compare us to something like that, yeah. Truly, I mean, I mean Pan, you know, okay. everybody knows Pantera is who pretty else? much gods in the metal world. So. Right. Who else would you want to be compared to? I mean, right. come on. Right. So if somebody wants to <laughs> say you sound it. like them guys, I get it. We're, there's, I mean, I hear, like, we're probably not on the same level, and my, that's my point of view, but, right. you know, if somebody wants to say you guys sound like that or that's the, that's the vibe I get from you guys, dude, all about it. Because I'm like, if, if you feel the same way that, about us that you felt about them guys and you're going to come and see us, wow. you know, I mean, what, what's that saying about us? That's yeah. saying that, you know, we could we could possibly do this for real. You know, do this big right. right. So, because uh, that's what, uh, you know, like they was trying to say that you all ain't sounding like your, uh, them to a point, but it's just, you got that same style. You know, and the same drive and all that. And so, anyway, I just didn't know. I thought I would ask you like that. Uh, but anyway, I got one more. Uh, I got like two more questions, but this one is a fun question, real fast. So anyway, <laughs> all right. Okay, if y'all was on a stranded island, name three albums that, or CDs that you would have to have with you. Mm. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, my, I got Cynic Focus. That's my favorite album of all time, probably. Um, Roy's favorite, I would pick a Led Zeppelin album. I don't know, probably Led Zeppelin 3, maybe for my mellow moods. You know, I like Led Zeppelin 3. Let's, hate, let's just <laughs> make sure we do this for the record. It's not Led Zeppelin that I hate. It's, it's, I don't really care for the singing and Robert Plant. Right. I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ranges the shit. Yeah, right. what, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I, I don't know the third ones. Can I have a compilation? No doubt. Give me the compilation. My CD. Life's easy, man. Horoscope, Overkill. Beg a different prong. Probably vulgar split down. I have to say, uh, I had a great Southern Trent Kill. It was always one of my favorites. Uh, uh, Exhorter the Law. I think that I think that was the uh, that was my uprising as yes. being a musician. That, that definitely made the biggest impact on me growing up. And. Uh, Overkill, probably so anything Overkill to me. I mean, Overkill has always been my favorite band. I think I've seen them more times than any band ever. So it would definitely be the Michael Jackson. <laughs> George yeah. Michaels. George Michaels. <laughs> Justin know. Bieber. The Bees. Yeah. Yeah. There there you, go. Go. you gotta have that. You gotta have Justin. Only if you're Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Worried about my jobs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, Say probably, I'd have to have an old school Metallica. Mm -hmm. Definitely, probably would have to go with a Pan a Pantera for sure. And Cowboys for Hell, love that album from day one. It kind of got me into drumming, honestly. And uh, man, I tell you, this would have to be a Lamb of God <laughs> for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> I really want the compilation CD. Though. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Because that was an awesome, awesome. plan. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, before I ask this last question, uh, uh, right now, if you want to give out more, you know, like any shout outs or anything that we haven't discussed, just go for it. Get to you first. I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Joe O'Brien from Rat Pack for helping us out. Uh, it was tremendous how they stepped in and, and really just pushed us from day one. And I, I think that's awesome because we really didn't expect to have any kind of backing whatsoever. And so I just want to say thank you to them and all their affiliates that helped us out. And Tina to, to, yeah, Tina Joe Pete, Brian, Tina yeah. Pete from the uh, rock star. Was it? Was it Big rock show. Big, Big rock, rock show. show. Yeah. Rock show. So I, uh, I would like to, uh, without, is to thank rock stars glue and you, Hell Billy. You play our tunes every time. Every time I check in there, there's a killbox tune play. <laughs> Uh, not only us, I don't mean that from just from a selfish point of view. Honestly, you play all these local bands, and in from when I say local, unsigned, I guess, bands from all over. I, I checked out a band, Volume Conflict or right. something from South Africa, right. you know, and I got 
you know, you know bands in um, New York City, Night Screams, and right. you know all these bands that you hear, and I would have never heard. You know, what I mean, that's just you, you've opened up a door for it wasn't there. Yeah, for, for people to be heard time. and to meet people and network. I mean, how many times have I been hopped in your chat room or something and talked to somebody like, hey, where's a sh you got a, what's a good gig in Dayton, you know, or right. what's a good gig in Chicago, you know, and if someone's always there ready to uh, help you out, it's a it's really a pretty neat community of musicians you guys put together. I, I, so that's my shout out to RSG baby and Bella. <laughs> there you go, Bella. <laughs> but anything else real fast though. Uh, but I got uh, one more question, and I say anyway, like, what does music mean to you? It's like air for me. <laughs> Honestly, I did, I've spent, without going into t telling the books, book version, I'll give you the, but once upon a time I quit playing, sold all my gear. I think a lot of musicians have done it at one point in their yeah. life or not, and it, 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 it turned into like an eight-year stint where I didn't even pick up, maybe played an acoustic guitar or something like that, and I had no idea, and then I started playing again and playing heavier music again, and it was like, wow, it's like I denied a part of my soul, you know, for a long time, it was, uh, I'll play it till, till I'm an old, I'll be, I'll be the blues guy, <laughs> you know, in the blues, hopefully, you know, I, I'll play it forever now, I'll never have another break, you know, I may, <coughs> that's, that's how important it is to me, it's like air. The same boat, man. I uh, went through the same thing. Went through about a seven-year deal without playing, and uh, actually hooked back up with Brad in a band called Psycho Set, and kind of realized how much I actually did miss what I had going on. And uh, I'm pretty much to the point where like, it's just going to go on. I can't do without it. Right. Yeah, that's definitely important. I mean, as far as like my my well-being because. I feel like if I didn't have it, I'd probably be a, a different person. I mean, it's it gives me such an outlet. And I'm, I, I hold it so high in my life, you know, as of something to to look forward to and to look back on, you know, when my life's over with and say, you know, what did you accomplish? And like, what did you live for? What did you do? And uh, so, I mean, just having that outlook on it, you know, it's it just, like I said, it holds very high in my life. So, I mean, music is what it is. And, I have a great time doing it. Uh, I'll, I'll probably do it to the day I die. You know, it's, it's a love. It's a love of my life, always. So. Well, honestly, for me, I, I have my wife and my kids and my family, and uh, my music is right there with me. And it's, I don't know, you know, we all go through a lot of stuff in our lives, and this is something that's really, you know, it's helped me get through bad times. Right. I wouldn't change it for nothing, and especially with this band. Well, I can't wait till the 30th, and so I guess you're all pumped for the 30th. Absolutely. Oh, my God. It's yeah, been a long time coming. Yeah, so, I think, can't wait. I mean, and to do it on, you know, on this level and at this caliber, I think it, it's really blowing my mind, you know, especially the response we get back from the show. And Plus, it's with the car. I mean, you can't go wrong. <laughs> I think it's going to be really huge, so, I mean, if you definitely, if like heavy music, definitely check it out. There's going to be some really good bands on this bill. Headlining band is X Factor One from Columbus, Ohio. They're on Mega Force Records. Cool dudes. Um, obviously, we're co headlining. For us, is Sakari. Before them, it's Seven, Seven Circle Sunrise. Sunrise, another killer band from around here. Real good rock band. And um, the other band is Star City Meltdown, which I believe is from Johnstown, Tennessee. If I said that wrong, I apologize, guys. But uh, so that they're. they're they're a really good band too. They're they're all. This is like a stacked lineup. So we're gonna bring it for sure. Very good first show. For it's us. Been a great show. And you all second one's gonna be beer fest. So that's got like how many bands you said? There's 30 bands. Should be 15 bands tonight. Pretty much all of them are kind of local. Yeah, it, and, and that's pretty much what the, the theme of the show is. It's support your local music. Right. And you know, and it's and it's very good for you know any band that's coming up around here that right. wants to be heard. You know, we're trying to get everybody back in the scene. Try to do this again. So you know, come you, out and support this shit. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you're in, if you're in, you know, music, and it's not just heavy music; it's any kind of music. Oh, yeah. You know, so if you love music and you like, you know, seeing some of your local bands that you like, you know, trying to come on out, make Maybe an impression. See somebody new you like. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what my motto is always at. You know, support your local music. Go to a show in your area, no matter where. 
So we're like internet radio, so it's all around the world. So it doesn't matter where, you know, just go to the show. So I just want to say thank you all again for this interview. And uh, uh, have, I can't wait till the 30th. So and uh, I just want to say thank you all. Hellbilly rules! Spread the word. Fucking A! Rockstar Blue. <laughs> Uh, before I let you leave, uh, can I get a station tag from you all to say uh, you're listening to Rockstar Blue, or this is Killbox, you're listening to all together. This is Killbox, and you're listening to rockstarsglue.com. Fucking A. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you. Awesome. So I'll get, I'm going to work with that. I'm going to play Live It uh, Friday at 6, and you're all going to be aired at 7. Friday. Oh, so right before the show. Yeah. Oh, right before Saturday. So I'm going to air that. Uh, and it'd be great yeah, to podcast. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. So, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. That was great. Oh, no, 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 no